we are going to look through these questions. Now, these are topics that we, we know are coming up on paper three. So we know number functions, number of machines are coming up. Um, we also know units of measure will be discussed, converting lengths, converting measure, and then alternate angles. But well, I will cover these. I'll explain them as best as I can. What I want you guys to do is sit back, look, listen, check your work. And if you've accidentally made a mistake, try and analyze what went wrong. And then in that analysis, hopefully it means it won't happen again. OK, but mistakes are fine. They're part of the learning process. So number machine input plus three times two gives us the output. Now, as I say, calculate the input when the output is 26. So what we need to do here is realize that the output is 26. So 26 belongs at the end of the number machine. OK, so that means if we want to work out the input, we have to go backwards. We have to do the reverse, do the opposite. So we're going to go backwards to work out what this beautiful thing is here. Now, when we do go backwards, we have to do the opposite. So instead of times in by two, we must divide by two. And then instead of adding three, we must subtract three. So step one, 26 divided by two is 13. 13 take away three is 10. Now, for the students who I've taught online today, you will know that I like to do checks. By check, I mean, right, well, let's put it in. Let's see if it's right. So 10 is the input. That's what I'm saying it is. Let's add three. That'll give me 13. Let's times it by two. Does it give me the output of 26? Yes, it does. So I can leave the exam knowing I've already picked up those marks because I've done a check and it gives me the output that I know I need. OK. So when you've got an answer, run a check through it, make sure you're happy with it. Question two, which units would you use to measure the capacity of a dosage of medicine? Now, I'm not sure if you, were, you can remember when you were young, if you were ever ill or poorly and you'd have Calpol, it would be on a little teaspoon. And that would be measured in milliliters. It would be a very small dosage. You would not be drinking a whole liter of medicine or a pint of medicine or a gallon of medicine. They're too large. Liters are things for like big bottles of water or um, baths and gallons. Yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Milliliters, very small. And that is represented by ML. Which units would you use to measure the height of a lorry? So a lorry. Well, it wouldn't be millimeters. That's too small. Centimeters as well is very small, so they'd be very. Yeah. Meters is what we're after. So they're probably four or five meters tall. A lorry kilometers way too big. Things that you'd measure kilometers in are, you know, marathons or the distance from one sit, uh, one village to another village. You'd argue you'd measure in kilometers. So they're very long. So that one understanding roughly how you would measure that. That's just. I don't want to say common sense because nothing really is common sense, but it's just using your knowledge of what would you measure and what would be the most sensible thing to suggest. Converting lengths. Now, so this is converting centimeters into meters, the first one. So let's just write this on the screen here because I think this is quite good to have these arrows to explain what we're doing. So to convert centimeters to meters, we divide by 100. And to get from meters to centimeters, we times by 100. Now, the, cl the clue is in the word centimetres. Cent means 100, but then that's something you need to learn. So I I can't really teach it in the most perfect of ways, but you need to remember to get from centimetres to metres, you divide, and to get from metres to centimetres, you times. Now, if we look at the question, we want to go from centimetres to metres. So we're going to go this way. So we're dividing by 100. Now, in the exam, you would have a calculator now. So you do 356 divided by 100 and you'd get an answer of. 3.56, that is the correct conversion. OK, and it's the same for this one here, millimeters and centimeters. So millimeters. Centimeters to get from millimeters to centimeters. We have to times by 10 because there's 10 millimeters in a centimeter and then to get from centimeters. Oh, wait. Ignore that. Divide by 10. Apologies. There you go. You divide by 10 and then the bottom you times by 10. Now, convert and measure. Some students are awesome at it. They just seem to have a knack for it. If you are a student that may struggle with convert and measure, get yourselves onto Google. Google converting measures. OK, and it will give you a nice chart to look at. You can write that down, create a poster from it, practice some questions using that.
We want to go from millimetres to centimetres. So millimetres to centimetres are, we're dividing by 10 this time. So my answer is going to be 3.2 centimetres, which is that one there. So it's really important we know whether we're times in or dividing and whether it's by 10, 100,000, et cetera. OK. This is the final start question. Then we're going to move on to a topic. Missing angle. So what is A? Now, this is known as an alternate angle. OK, and alternate angles are the same. Can you see how I've created a letter Z there? Hopefully you guys can see that Z. It means it's an alternate, which means that A is also 46 degrees. We know in the advanced information that alternate angles, alternate, there we go, alternate angles are coming up. So remember, alternate angles equal the same. And if you can create a Z shape, whether it's that way or the other way, they're the same, okay? Let me show you an example of the other way. Uh, let me change the color of my pet, uh, the highlighter to one that stands out. So this looks like a bit of a funky Z. But can you see that green Z there? It's still a Z shape. So what does that mean? You may be asking. Well, it means that this angle, and we'll call it B, is the same as that one there. So those two angles are the same because they're alternate. Once again, make a note of that. If you're thinking, Sam, I'm not too sure about that. Write down alternate angles. Get yourselves onto YouTube, Google, look at some examples, drill into your long-term memory. So we're going to look at nth term of sequence. We're going to be looking at roots and turning points and then vector arithmetic. That's my focus for this afternoon or this evening. So let's go on a journey together. Let's smash these upcoming topics. We're going to look first at sequences, though. So geometric sequences in particular and then arithmetic ones. Find the next term in these geometric sequ sequences. So you'll notice, guys, that the gaps between these numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger. So the gap between 12 and 36 is smaller than the gap between 36 and 108. So what we essentially need to do is work out, well, what's the rule? What are these numbers going up by? Well, I know to get from 12 up to 36, I need to times it by three. Now, if I can test that and do 36 times three, Brilliant, I get 108. So it appears to be the rule is times by three each time. So the next one, yes, yeah, triple, James, brilliant. So the next one, I'm going to have to triple it. I'm going to have to times it by three. So 324 times by three will give me 972. That is a geometric sequence. We're multiplying the numbers and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. The gap is changing every time. And this is another one here. What do you, how do you reckon I get from two up to 14, guys? What's your suggestion? Which is times by seven, brilliant. And then just do a quick check, does that work? Does 14 times seven get you to 98? Yes, it does. So do a check, make sure that rule that you've thought of works and then put it into action. And then you say, right, the next one times by seven. And make it very visual, show the examiner, you've spotted the rule, you put it into action, 4,802. That is a G, these are two examples of geometric sequences. The numbers get bigger, bigger, bigger. The gaps are changing every time. Now, we've got arithmetic here. Arithmetic, okay. The gaps between the numbers are the same. So you're either adding or subtracting the same amount each time. So hopefully you can see here, 6 to 11, we're adding 5. 11 to 6, we're adding 5. Yeah, each time we're adding 5. So what do we do to the last number here? We add 5, so we'll have an answer of 26. The gap is consistent. It's the same. Now let's look at this one here. Minus 3 to 1, minus 1 to 1, 1 to 3. Now, personally for me, guys, I like dealing with positive numbers. So to make my life easier, I'm going to look at this here, one and three. Well, how do I get from one to three? I add two. Let's just see, minus one, add two. Yeah, it does give me that. So I can safely say, well, plus two is the rule here. Three add two is going to give me five. So there are my two examples there. Now, I've been a bit of a cheeky chap here because the questions on Desmos is using that knowledge to try and challenge you a little bit i've asked you in a way that i think an examiner could be quite cheeky in how they ask it so i'm these are the two practice questions i want you to do i want you to do it on desmos as well so 
you know, you guys know the drill with decimals now. I want to see, because I don't want you, um, I want to see what your answers are. That's what I want to say. I want to see what your answers are. So write down the next term in the following geometric sequence. Write down the next term in the following arithmetic sequence. So there's two questions there that really do make you think. They really make you think, and I think that's a good thing. Okay? So I'll be quiet. I'll let you quickly work through those. I'll give you a minute or two. Then I'll come back and we'll talk talk about them. Okay. Liv, that's absolutely fine. I always know when I start these sessions at six o'clock, it's a bit of an awkward time because some students are still on the buses home. But if I start it too much later, then it, I don't get a chance to eat. But I have recorded this, so you guys will be able to um, come back and check in and watch whatever you may have missed. OK. 30 more seconds, give you guys a chance to finish these two answers or these two numbers. I reckon these are one mark each. One mark each. So two marks up for grabs for these questions. OK. Bring your attention back to this beautiful PowerPoint and we'll talk about them, OK? So it says here, Write down the next term in the following geometric sequence. So in the exam, my eyes and my ears would be like, oh, that's important. Geometric sequence. That's something I need to utilize. OK, so if it's a geometric sequence, I know that we have to times the numbers to get from the one one number to the other. I have to times. I'm not adding. I'm timesing to get up. So I have to think, how do I get from five up to 20? I have to times it by four. So if I want the next number, I must times that by four. 20 times by four gives me 80. So that one word geometric is the hidden clue for that sequence. Because some of you may think five up to 20, that's add 15. Next one would be 35. Well, that'd be an arithmetic sequence because you're adding. Geometric, think times or divide. For arithmetic, think add or subtract, OK? If there's anything I want you to take away from this evening, that can be one of those things. Let's bring our attention to the next question for B. Write down the next term in the following arithmetic. Arithmetic, right, here we go. Let me highlight that, arithmetic. So that means the numbers, the gaps are the same. So if this is 4 up to 8, well, I'm adding 4 this time. And what do I do, need to do to get to the next number? I add 4 again. 8 add 4 is 12. They are my two answers. So be really attentive. That's a good word, attentive. Try and pay as close attention as you can to some of the questions. And I don't know if many of you highlight certain words. Some students are like this. I'm not saying this is any of you guys, but they'll be like this. They'll highlight loads of different words, which doesn't really help. Try and identify just one or two that you think pretty important because if they're pretty important you want your you want your brain to be focusing on that attention uh, on that attention to detail okay <laughs> yeah try so james try and highlight just one or two things okay right we are now going to look at nth term sequences now there's different ways teachers teach this so i do apologize in advance if i teach this slightly different to how your teachers taught you in the classroom okay hands up apologies if you've got a method that works keep your method but i'm going to show you the way i do it because it gives me the correct answer so i, I like it so it says here uh, identify the nth term sequence for the following okay so four seven ten thirteen so step one i identify what they're going up in so these numbers are going up in threes 
So I know the start of my sequence is going to be 3M. OK, and I ask myself, well, I then say to myself, right, well, let me write my three times table. Three, six, nine, 12. And what I do at that point is I say, well, how do I get from three to four? I add one. How do I get from six to seven? I add one. I add one. And what do you think I need to do to, to my uh, beautiful answer? I need to put add one in. 3N plus one. That is a, an expression that will help me. It's basically my three times table, but I'm adding one. That's what it is. OK, if we have a look at the next one. Once again, identify what they're going up in. So they're going up in fours. So it's going to be four N. Four, eight, 12, 16. Well, already I think some of you are spotting this. How do I get from four to five? Eight to nine, 12 to 13. I add one. Three N. Add one for the first, four N plus one for the second. OK, let me do another one because I don't like the fact they're quite similar. Let me go. Let me go saucy. Let's go. <clears throat> 12. 17. 22, just three numbers. Step one, what are those numbers going up in? Talk to me, what are those numbers going up in? Five, yeah, brilliant. So it's going to be five N. I then do my five times table. 5, 10, 15. How do I get from 5 up to 12? I add 7. How do I get from 10 to 17? I add 7. My final answer? 5n add 7. Smiley face. There we go. So slightly different now. We're adding 7. OK. Um, OK, I'm happy with those. I'm happy with those. We're now going to look at what happens when the sequences are going down. OK, they're going, they're dropping similar, slightly more difficult. So, keep, you know, keep an eye on the screen. What are they going down in? Talk to me, guys. This this one here, 13, 10, 7, 4. What's it going down in? The numbers are dropping, going down in threes. Yeah, so it's going to be minus 3N. Excellent. So it's your minus three times table, which sounds a bit peculiar, but that's what it is. It's your minus three times table. Now. Minus three, minus six, minus nine, minus 12. Now, this is the challenge, is how do I get from minus three up to 13? How do I get from minus six up to 10, et cetera, et cetera, OK? Now, what I do is I pick, let me just get the highlighter, I pick two numbers that I think are quite nice. So I'm going to go for minus six and 10. How do I get from minus six up to 10? Well, to get from minus six to zero, I add six. And to get from zero up to 10, I add 10. So the total difference is 16. So I add 16. That's how I do it. And then you can do a quick check. Well, does that work for this? Minus three, is it? Yeah, it does work. So add 16 works. So it's going to be minus three and add 16. Now, I'm going to tell you a little secret here. I'm not a born and bred mathematician, OK? But I know mathematicians, they don't like, they don't sometimes like having an answer starting with a negative, a minus symbol. So they flip it, they swap them over. So you might have 16 minus 3n as a potential answer on like a multiple choice question. It's the same, just flipped, because that means they don't have a negative symbol at the start. So just be aware of that, OK? Those pesky mathematicians, what are they like? Right, these are going down in fives. So it's gonna be my minus five times table, minus five, minus 10, minus 15, minus 20. Once again, pick, pick a pair of numbers that you think quite like that, could work with those. I'm thinking minus 10 up to 20. That's what I think is quite nice for me to work with. Well, to get from minus 10 to zero, it's 10. To get from zero to 20, it's 30, so I have to add 30. That's what I'm saying. So it's going to be minus 5n, and then I'm adding 30 because that's the gap. OK, and just check it for the other one. Minus 5, yeah, that would be add 30 as well. OK, so these are tricky. Let me put down some chilies there because these are your trickier ones. But the tricky ones are what gets you the marks. They separate you from the rest. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get you now to go on to Desmos and have a go at four yourselves. I've done four. You guys do four. OK, get stuck in, create some magic and I'll see you guys when I've got a list of answers there for you. OK, but best thing to do, write these out on a piece of paper, doodle over them, put your times tables in there. That's what I would do. If it's good enough for me, I think it's good enough for you guys as well. OK, get stuck in, show me what you can do. Apologies, Jack. Yeah, I don't understand why when joining late, you can't see the chat previous. It's a bit annoying that, but you've got it. There you go. And then for those watching at home, they're all for nth term sequence questions that the students are doing now. So pause it at the, on the screen. And then when I start going through it, you can unpause it and you can check your answers against mine. OK. Right, guys, I'm just looking down now. Looks like you guys are just finishing off C and moving on to question D. So C and D, they are the tricky ones. Give them a go. This is the opportunity to practice, make mistakes, learn from those mistakes. Um, and I can also try and set you guys sentry stuff. So if you're like, you know what, so I'm struggling on the term, send me stuff. I can. I'll set you some assignments on Sentry or I'll find a good document to send across to you. OK, I will go through these questions in a momento. But the next time you hear my beautiful voice, we'll be going through them. OK.
OK, my friends. The time has come for me to earn my money to try and explain these four lovely questions. Um, so bring your attention back to the PowerPoint. Hopefully you've got your answer written down, scribbled down somewhere where you can check your working out against mine. And hopefully we're on the same wavelength. And if you have made a mistake, hopefully it's just a quick little, oh yeah, that makes sense. And that little light bulb moment, you carry that into your exam on Monday, you'll pick up extra marks because of it. So let's try and make that happen. So step one, identify what the numbers are going up in. So four, nine, 40, 90. Well, they're going up in five. So it's going to be in five N. OK, step one, five then. I am then going to do my five times table, five, 10, 15, 20. How do I get from five to four? That's the question. How do I get from my times table to the sequence that I've been given? I take away one. How do I get from 10 to nine? I take away one. So it's going to be five N subtract one. That is my first answer. OK. Next one, 5, 11, 17, 23. They are going up in sixes. So it's going to be 6, N. I then do my six times table. 6, 12, 18, 24. How do we get from 6 to 5? I subtract 1. How do I get from 12 to 11? I take away 1. Once again, it's very similar. I should have checked these before I put them in. because They're very similar, aren't they? But... Hopefully kind of the practice has helped you a little bit. OK, so always think, how do I get from my times table to the sequence that you've been given? OK, so how do you get from the times table to the sequence? That's why I always do it above because it's, you naturally look down. So how do I get from that to that? How do I get from that to that? Do I add? Do I take away? They're the sort of questions. But practice makes, I don't want to say perfect, but practice definitely helps you make progress. OK, now this one here. We're looking at sequences that go down. So seven, five, three, one, they're going down in two. So it's going to be minus two N. Then I'm going to do my minus two. So minus two, minus four, minus six, minus eight. OK, which one's screaming out at me? I think this one here. Minus eight and one. That screaming out to me is like, Sam, these numbers look nice. Play, work with these. That's what it's saying to me. So how do we get from minus eight to one? I add nine. And does it work for this? Yeah, I can see that it works for the others. So minus two n add nine. And if you really want to be fancy, nine minus two n by flipping them, by moving one in front of the other, basically. OK, and then finally, the last question I got you guys to do was this one. So four, one, minus two, minus five. Well, that's going down in three, so it's going to be minus three n. So minus three, minus six, minus nine, minus 12. Now, sometimes it's easier to work with two negatives. So you might want to pick two negative numbers to work with because the gap between them is easier to see. So how do I get from minus two up? No, terrible sound. Let me start again. How do I get from minus nine up to minus two? I add seven. Yep, add seven, it works. OK, but they're nth term sequences. Now, I could have been nice and just done nice numbers, made it that easy for you. But I don't think that's fair because it doesn't reflect what the exam could be like. So I've tried to go. Relevant, train hard and hopefully the exam's got nicer questions. But yeah, if you're thinking, you know what, I need a bit more practice on them. At least now, you know, right, nth term sequences. I'm going to put some time aside to master that. OK. Now, I like to think the rest of the lesson is actually the rest of the session is actually quite nice compared to that, especially. Roots and turning points on a graph. OK, here's my beautiful quadratic graph. What are the coordinates of the turning point? What are the roots? So the turning point is where the line changes direction. And hopefully you guys can all agree the line changes direction exactly there. So what do I need to do? I need to give the coordinates. So it'll be minus one, minus six. I'm going across minus one, down to minus six. Remember, along the corridor, down the stairs. And as one of my students said the other day, a bird learns to walk before it flies. Which doesn't make sense because it's going down. But you, 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 yeah, along the corridor, up or down the stairs. What are the roots of the graph? So the roots are where the line crosses the x-axis. 
So there's a root there of three and a root there of minus five. So minus five and three. So roots, think of a tree. It's where the roots, or it's where the tree hits the ground. That's where your roots are. So that is my turning point and they are my roots. I'm going to get you guys to do four. I've only done one example, but I'll leave that on the screen. But I want you to do four of them, OK? Different quadratic graphs, different curved graphs. I like to think I've done a good job of creating them. You'll have to let me know. Um, but let me just quickly get you back onto Desmos on the right place. So I want four turning points and eight roots for each, or not for each graph in total. OK, so all on one page. Look at the graph, identify the turning point, identify the roots, and then move on. OK, get stuck in. These were probably two marks as well, so, you know, worth having. Off we go. OK, I can see most of you now seem to be arriving at the final graph. But all of these are quadratic graphs, they're curved, which means they have a turning point and they will have roots y cross on the x axis. OK, so I'll highlight them. I'll make it nice and clear, hopefully. And then by sheer repetition, it will be ingrained in your memory and then roll around on Monday. You'll be like, yep, easy marks. Thank you kindly. We're going to go through these four graphs then. So the first one with the red line, I believe that is the first one. Yes, it is. So the roots, let me get the answer questions pop up. So, oh no, have I got you guys to do the roots first? I have as well, right? I'll do the roots and then I'll do the turning point. So the roots are where the line crosses the X axis. So zero and six. They are the roots, zero and six. The turning point, needs to be given as a coordinate, OK? So coordinate of 3 minus 3. We're going across 
You can tell it's been a long day. I'm making mistakes here. And that's not even a rubber. Oh, screw it. Right, here we go. Three and then down to minus three. OK. Three minus three. Next one. Start with the roots. So minus four and zero. So nice and easy. So even if it goes through this point here, that zero, that is just simply a zero. Don't be put off by the fact it goes through the dead center of the of the of the graph. OK, it's just a zero. The turning point is there. TP turning point minus two minus two. OK, put it in brackets so we know it's a coordinate minus two minus two minus two. Minus two. Yeah, happy days. Let's do a little check. Um, once again, let's look at the roots first. So we've got, hopefully you guys can see one and three. And then we have the turning point here of two minus three. So once again, whack it in brackets. So we know it's a coordinate, two minus three. Two seconds, guys. Okay. This one, quite a wide quadratic graph here, just nice and spread. But it will still have a turning point and it will still have roots. So let's look at the roots first. Minus four and four. Minus four and four. OK. And then the turning point is dead center. So it's going to be zero minus two. The zero because we're not moving left or right because it's bang in the center. But we are going down minus two. So it's going to be zero minus two. So the roots are where the line crosses the x axis. The turning point is where the line changes direction and starts to go back up. And it's often a very definitive point. You can stick a finger on it. OK, you can put a cross on it and then give those coordinates. Now, it may ask you, it might say, what is the y coordinate? What is the x coordinate? So if it says what is the y coordinate, you only might need to give the minus two. OK. So just read the question carefully, but that's something that's been probably said to you guys many, many times about reading the question carefully. There's no different here, OK? Right, look at that. We've covered nth term sequences. We've looked at roots and turning points. We're now going to look at vector arithmetic. This is something we covered a long time ago, actually. I remember doing this with you guys a couple of weeks ago, maybe even a, you know, a month or two ago. So basically, these are vectors. So they're in brackets. And they basically give you instructions to move a, a shape. But vector arithmetic isn't actually about moving a shape around. It's about dealing with the numbers inside of the brackets. OK, so let's start with question one here. What is A plus 2B? Well, A is 4 over 3. So that's going to stay the same. So I'm going to put that here. 4, 3. And we're adding 2B. So two lots of this. So what do I need to do? Times that by 2. The whole thing, not just the top number, but the whole thing. I should put it there. That's better. So the top number, two times two is going to be four. Five times two is ten. That is A and that is 2B. We're adding them together. Add the top numbers. So that's going to be four and four is eight. Add the bottom numbers. Three add ten is 13. Done. Vector arithmetic ticked off. So identify what you need to do with each vector. Sometimes you may have to just leave it as it is, like we did for A. Sometimes you may have to times it, like you did for B. It's right, James, I'm going to do, um, blah, blah, blah. I'll do another two examples. Don't worry, I've got another two. Right, next one, A times B. So we're not doing anything. We're leaving A as it is, and we're leaving B as it is, but we're going to times them together. So what I'm going to do, write them in brackets closer to each other. So four and then minus five. I'm going to times it by minus two, minus three. Times the top numbers together. Four times minus two is going to give me minus eight. And then minus five times by minus three. Well, a negative multiplied by a negative will give me a positive number. So that will give me 15. And remember, it's a vector. So we'll put it in brackets. OK, so be careful of that. You know, you've got a negative and you times it by another negative. It will give you a positive outcome. OK, now just as a quick note before. I know we're not getting onto as much just yet on Desmos. I don't know if you can type in vectors. So just put your answer as a fraction. 
I will know what you're on about, okay? Now, this is the juicy one. I've given myself plenty of space to work with this. 3A plus 2B. So let's just put A here, minus 5 and 3. I want 3A, so I need to times this by 3. So that's going to give me minus 15 and then 9 and then two lots of B. So let's just say B's here. That's going to be 4 minus 3. And I want two lots of it, so I want to times it by 2. OK, so. That's going to be 8. 4 times 2 is 8. Minus 3 times 2 is minus 6. So they're my two new fractions or my two new vectors that I'm working with. OK, what do I need to do? I need to add them. So let me just do this up here now. So I'm going to be adding. Let me just show you these. I'm adding these together. So let's do it so they run next to each other, make my life easier. So minus 15 and 9, and I'm adding 8 and minus 6. Well, minus 15 and 8 is going to give me minus 7. And then 9 add minus 6 is going to give me 3. Now, you may be thinking, Sam, that was good. You did that. You did that quick. You've got a calculator, remember, in your exam. Minus 15, add A in your calculator. Boom, there's your answer. 9, add minus 6 equals 3. Boom, there's your answer. You don't even have to give your, don't even have to break a sweat. Use your calculator to do the dirty work. Use your brain to just to know what you need to do with the calculator. And then that is your final answer. So there's a fair bit two vectors. You need to change them to get what you need. So if it's 3a, you have to take your vector for a and times the top number by three and the bottom by number by three. And then once you know what you need to do with those, you put them together or times them or whatever you may have to do. I've done three. I would like you guys to do three now. OK. I'm giving you some interesting ones. I want you to be challenged. Give it a go. OK. And then in about eight minutes, I'll go through them and then We've done. So the, the finish line is in sight. You guys have worked excellently so far. One final reminder, put your answer as a fraction because that way it makes your life easier. And I understand that your fraction answer is actually a vector. OK, so there's a link to Desmos in the chat. Work through that as best as you can. OK. Hi, James. So when it says like, for example, your first question, here, it says 4A, I would times that vector by 4. But do you know how it says 4A plus B? Once I've done the multiplication, then I'd add them. So it depends on the symbol. In the question, if that makes sense, sometimes it might say times, sometimes it might be saying plus. So just keep your wits about it. So try and look at the question. But if you interpret it as best as you can, I think you'll come out with the right answer. Hi Sam, sorry. Um, I wonder. I'm wondering. Just wondering. Oh, sorry, it's just gone off for some reason. I can't hear you now. Um, you know, sure. Oh, now I can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sorry. Um, right. So what? The actual numbers in the brackets. Yes. You, so, so say A and B. So you five times two, or is it oh, five right. plus two? Right. I'm with you now. I'm with you now. So let's say, for example, this was purely A plus B. Okay. Yeah. Five over three. 
and then I'd mm -hmm. add two, four, and then I'd add across. So I do five, add two is seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then three, add four is seven. So for that right. question, T plus B, you just add across the top, add got across the top. Right, got, yeah. Does that make Brilliant. a bit more sense? Yeah, it does, it does. Sorry, I've just had a bit of distraction. Sorry. <laughs> That's I think right, I'm don't apologise, that. that's fine. Well, I'm, I'm happy that you've asked me the question because at least then hopefully we can develop that understanding. Um, Brilliant, thank even you. At, even at the end of this, if you're not sure, ping me some messages across and I'll try and send you some uh, good YouTube videos. Oh, that. brilliant. Okay, thank you. No worries, James, no worries. Okay, guys, keep working through those questions. I can see one or two of you have finished all of them, so just have a little breather. But there's some consistent answers, you know. Some good, there's some consistent answers, which is nice. But I will go through these in a moment, so don't rush, just take your time. And then in two minutes, I'll review them, okay? So try and do as many as you can within those two minutes. If you've finished, just check, make sure you're happy. But well, these this sort of question would appear towards the end of a paper. Whenever I've seen it in past papers, it's towards the end. And it surprised me how many students leave it. They don't even attempt a question like this. They do have that work. If you, you know, if you've had a bit of experience, hopefully now you can answer it with a bit of confidence. Okay, guys, I'm going to review these three questions with you. Hopefully we've had some success. Let's check. I've not done these yet, so it's going to be the first time for me. Um, let's have a look. So 4A plus B. So straight away with the, the vector A, I know I need to times it by 4. So you can do that to the side. Just, you know, you just park it to the side and then you can use it in a bit. So 5 times 4 would give me 20. 3 times 4 is 12. So that's the vector that I now need to use, 20 over 12. So 20 over 12, and then I'm adding B, which is 2, 4. So 20 add 2, 
is 22. 12 add 4 is 16. So my first vector answer, 22, 16. That's what I'm looking for. OK. For the second one, 2A plus 3B. 2A plus 3B. So with A, I need to times it by 2. And with B, I need to times it by 3. So let's just do that down here. So 2A minus 2 times 2 is minus 4. 3 times 2 is 6. OK, that's that one done. B, I'm timesing it by 3, aren't I? So 2 times 3 is 6. 5 times 3 is 15. Close the brackets. And what we're we doing, we're adding them together. Minus 4 add 6 is 2. 6 add 15 is 21. So there is my vector 2 over 21. The third and final one, A times 2B. Well, A stays exactly as it is, so it's going to be 3 and minus 3. I'm going to times that by 2B. So I'm times in this by 2. I'm going to do it directly below. So 10 times 2 is 20. 5 times 2 is 10. Are you ready for this? 3 times 20 is 60. Minus 3 times 10 is minus 30. So quite a large vectors there in the end, so we're times in them. But the numbers are quite nice to work with. And if you're struggling with negative numbers, use your calculator. Type in minus 3 times 10 and you'll get your minus 30. I'm going to do a quick sketch of a calculator here. Use this as much as you can in your exam because it makes your life easier. It takes the pressure off your off your brain and it allows the calculator which is purpose built to help you along the way okay but hopefully guys we've covered a few bits there now if there's anything in today's session whether it be nth term sequences the roots or turning point of a graph or vector arrangement if there's anything that you struggle with send me a message privately say sam not too happy with x y or z not too happy with this not too happy with that I will go out of my way. I'll find a good explanation explanation and I'll find a good YouTube video. That's what I'll do. And I'll send it your way. I'll send you some stuff on Sentry, anything like that, that I think will benefit you. Because basically you don't need to learn it for life. You need to learn it for Monday. And then after Monday, if it if it fades away into the distance, that's fine. But let's learn it for Monday. When that question pops up in an exam, you can answer it with confidence. You can get those marks and then you can leave that exam room thinking, it was worthwhile me putting in that extra 20, 30 minutes that evening or that day to get that to, know, to learn that thing. OK, but that is the end of the session. Bang on an hour, pretty much. So rarely rare do I plan a session that lasts the hour, but I've done that. I've managed it. I have recorded this. So if you want to watch this back, you can do. I'm going to stop the recording now, so it's not going to be too long. Uh, but guys, thank you for making the time and the effort for being here. I do appreciate.